YouTube this is Lisa I hope everyone is having a wonderful day I'm doing great if this is your first time visiting my channel I would like to welcome you and if you are a return viewer thank you for coming back again I'm out in the garden and I am um, in um, the drip irrigation uh, setup we installed the little uh, red top emitters and all the pots and containers out there in the big garden and they don't spray that well and so uh, we went to Lowe's and we got these um, I got two packs and um, I am going to go out here and see if I can replace those with the red ones that we have on there they just um, I mean, some of, them you, some of them are spraying good, but more are not spraying good. And no matter how you adjust them, they just won't spray good. And um, sometimes you go out there and some of them are not even screwed on. They're just there. And the water is just shooting out of it. And so um, I'm going to put these on and um, see if these will work better. So I'll be right back. Okay, you all. So this is um, this row here are all tomatoes, and um, these first two right here are Paul Robeson, and uh, they're doing really good. It's just uh, it's just getting so big. <laughs> And it's tomatoes all in there. Maybe I should take some off so they can just produce. But big as this plant is, all it's got is three little old bitty ones. That one's got four or five big ones. But this area back here is where I wanted to change those emitters. Like those red emitters there, that one. I mean, sometimes water just run out of it and it comes out down here, like on, on the ground. And um, it's just going straight through. And um, it must be working well because <laughs> these plants don't look like they're thirsty at all. I ran drip this morning and I'm going to run it again tonight because it got up to about 97 degrees today. And, um, but I mean, the plants look great. I'm happy. But I just don't know why it's so much that. It's just coming out. See how this is kind of stained here and right around the bottom there and right around the bottom. It's because it gets so wet. So I'm going to change out these emitters with the ones my sister got from Lowe's the other day. And, uh, we're just going to see how uh, theirs work. It's the Orbitz brand, which is a, a good brand in the drip irrigation world, I think. Um, these that I have, these red ones in here. i tell you what, this thing is like a tomato vine for real. Like, it is wrapping around. Let me sit you down. I need to work on this one. <laughs> this big joker right here is squatting down and let me put him up here so he can stand up. What is this? It's a black beauty. 
I've never grown it before. And uh, it's growing like a squash vine or something. This big sucker right here, I should have got it before it got so big. Or maybe, maybe it'll be okay like that. Okay, so I'm gonna get busy and go ahead and um, switch out these emitters. And so I'll be right back. Okay, you all, so I'm going to uh, see if I can replace these. Um, as I said, these are the Orbit brand. And um, I think in the drip irrigation world, this is one of the top brands. And so it looks just like that uh, red one, but it is, uh, it's just uh, black here. So I don't know if the spray pattern is going to be different. This one will screw as well, but it's pretty tight. So I don't know. I just sure hope that it will uh, work better. And we'll pull that one up. See if I can get it off of this. I think I'm gonna have to cut that. And I don't know if the soil is just so fluffy because I do know that when I stand here and water with the hose it will water will start to run out the bottom so it's probably just that we don't need to leave it on as long as we do the drip irrigation okay I had to go get my little cutters because that don't want to come off down in that hole like that. Oh, that broke off in there. Oh. And if these work better, I'm going to get more of them. Because we have a lot of pots and containers out here with these little sprinklers in them. And I think those 27 gallon containers need um, more than two of these in it. suckers off of here so they don't uh, grow okay so that is those two and I think what I'll do is uh, prune some of these tomato plants as I change out their sprinklers Okay, this one is a carbon tomato, and it's got a lot of stuff down here at the bottom that needs to come off. Yep, 
you all, if you don't take care of these suckers, they will get away from you and they will just be all over the place. Now you can leave the suckers on there if you want to, but they will end up being a whole nother plant. And um, they just get so big like that. And I got a, a Paul Robeson over there on the porch that is as big as a tree. And I topped it or I, um, I cut some of it off Saturday. And because it was just falling over. And I put a stake in there and... It is still, it's pulling the stake down now. <laughs> I think it was Miss Robbie that I heard um, say that it was her. And I can't remember the name of her channel. But she's out in California. And she's always got good tricks and tips for the garden. And she was saying that uh, on your tomato plants, you know, these, um, they, they grow all kind of leaves. These leaves are, it's just a big leaf. And it may end up being uh, like growing downward. And then out of the elbow, like where this leaf is connected to the stem, in that little corner right in there will grow out a uh, a sucker which can end up being a whole big another plant <laughs> on here so on your indeterminate tomato plants you can leave the suckers on if you want to you'll get more tomatoes but if you take them off you'll get bigger tomatoes and uh, you might not get as many, but you'll get bigger ones. So it just depends on what you want. If you want a bunch of tomatoes, leave the suckers on. If you want bigger tomatoes, take them off. So that, you know, what you do let flower and grow, they'll make you a big plant, a big fruit. So, but this leaf... It helped shade the plant. And you can take them off if you want to, or you can leave them on. Now, you do want the plant to be airy, like so that it can get good airflow. Because if you get if you get too cluttered and too much going on, not enough airflow and all like that, the hornworms will come and invade and they will eat your plant up. So it's just all about what you want. And um, some of these I do leave. But the ones that hang down and touch the ground, I take them off. There's one right there. This one is holding it up. And this one is holding that one up. So I'm just going to leave them. And see the one that looks like that. It's going to produce, see these little flowers that's coming on it. That, those are the ones that's going to produce the fruit. This one just shades the plant and shades your fruit. And so I just kind of wanted to share that with you. I probably didn't have to go in such detail. Uh, I can't get these off. <sighs> so let me just move along. Put this one on.
Okay. So I'm going to move on on to two. I'm going to go ahead and prune some of this off of the bottom. This basil smells good. I don't know what kind it is. We've planted several different kinds of basil. I know there are some people that have trouble trying to grow tomatoes. They say the hornworm comes and eat their tomato plants up. And um, I truly believe in the growing basil with your tomato plant because the hornworm cannot stand the smell of basil. And it's been time I told people, you know, grow some basil with your tomato plant and they will say, well I did and it didn't work. It doesn't work for me. And what I fail to say to them is grow basil like a sweet basil or Genovese basil that has that good basil smell. And uh, I hate these little cutters. They ain't worth a flip. Little Dollar Tree things. And um, so get you a basil to grow with your tomato plant that smells, that's strong. Because I'm telling you, the lawn where they have a bothered me too much and you got to keep a good airflow on them so they don't um, come and attack your plants but sweet basil uh, Genovese basil holy basil and I don't know what this one is but it smells so good and um, try one of those. I don't know what kind some of you may have tried of basil and it didn't work, but it probably was not one that was um, that smelled strong because I have a uh, a red Reuben basil out here growing and I don't think it smells that strong it don't smell as strong as the uh, sweet basil and the Genovese and I gotta ask my sister what basil this one is because it smells good it's almost minty smelling. There is a ant on my toe. This uh, black beauty that's over here with the other tomato plants by the shed it is uh, it almost looks like it wants to grow upside down and that's where this one acts you have to check your tomato plants every day so Is a hornworm can come when you're not looking or while you sleep or something like that <laughs> and eat your plant up 
and you need to know. And if he is out there doing that, then you need to get rid of him. This whole thing right here, I'm taking off. I may take that off too. This is a Cherokee purple. And it's doing really well. This one is black cream. Okay, you all, so I am going to go and start the drip irrigation, and I'm going to come back out here and adjust these as I need to. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the system on. I'm going to kind of turn, turn these. Well, he's doing the same thing as the others. I mean, it's just coming out of the top. And this is supposed to spray. It's supposed to be a spray. This is no better than what I took out. I wonder is it not enough pressure? See that's off. Let's see how this one gonna do. This is no better. You see all he's doing is leaking right down in there where it's stuck at and just getting it wet right there. I don't know if it's not enough pressure, I don't know. This has one dripper in it, one emitter, right there, and it's just barely dripping, and it's probably been on 10 minutes, and uh, all that water is running out of it. Okay, that is the pot I was just looking at. I'm on this side of it now, and 
it runs out of here and comes down and it is connected to the drip line right there and it is not leaking right there it's not leaking right there so that tells me that it's just dripping that much water I guess it's not holding the water because it is running out of on the ground and as slow as that is dripping that's that's how it's doing this is my thornless blackberry it does the same thing it's wet all it's wet down there on the soil but it's just uh it's just the one emitter in there and it's not dripping down here where it's connected to the flow line so I guess even though it just looks like it's just drizzling just dri dripping just a little it is actually uh, watering because <laughs> everything is getting watered everything seems to be happy so I'm gonna uh, pick some of these uh, cucumbers because I see some that need to be picked. This one is spraying real good. It is doing a real good job in here spraying. This is two plants in here and I think they're getting good water the both of them this one right here that I wanted to get this one hanging off here but could hit This is the one that I saw. Instead of these things blowing up this trellis, they over here blowing down the pot. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can do some pruning to this tomato plant because it is really big. And I don't want it to too big over here. It's these cucumbers plants, they're big enough.
I think I have pruned this before. So it should be fine. This one is a Kellogg's breakfast. I've never grown it either. This is my first time. And I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. It's got a tomato right there. These are supposed to be yellow. Okay, I'm going to move over to the okra. My sister's already been over there, but I'm going to go look and see if she missed any. <laughs> Try to take this one. This is a little small purple one right here. I'll just go ahead and take that one. I think the drip has turned off because there I don't see any more drip now. I have some lesia over here. They're getting big. This giant, it's uh, got a bunch on it, little beady ones. So I need to put some clips on these and um, some of these are were real small the last time that I worked on these and they did not They weren't that tall, but since they have gotten pretty big, so I'm gonna put some tomato clips on these. I have got to prune some of these. I think it is one growing off of this one. It is growing over there. Big Paul Robeson right here is just off the chain, growing, growing off the chain. Look how big it is. And I cut a lot off the bottom Saturday and I put a stake down in here because some winds came through and kind of shifted it that way. And it's a trellis, a cage in here. And, um, that cage was not going to hold it up too much longer. So, I pruned the bottom of it. And I did try to get some uh, off of inside of here. But, I think I need to bring this up. I just don't know what to do.
Because <laughs> it is huge. Back here, I think that I will. It seemed like it has doubled in size since Saturday. My neighbor, he comes and stares at it and he says, Oh, I sure wish, hope my Paul Robeson will get that big. <laughs> and it is tomatoes all on here. Okay, but I still didn't do nothing with this. If I can get that up, I just feel like it wouldn't lean this way so much. Mess up these tomatoes and have them falling off. <laughs> Trying to see how I can get I may as well just I'm gonna just let it go because I don't want to tear up anything this thing is leaning this way now I don't think I'm going to just leave it alone. Okay, you all. So this is the little harvest that uh, I got today. I got these cucumbers. I've got all of these cucumbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cucumbers. And then... I got what's in here is what I picked. Got this okra. These two are Burmese. See they have the little bumps on them. And um that's how I can that's how I can tell the difference in them. It's the little bumps or not. And uh, these others are, this one is a Clemson Spineless. And I think it's, well, when it can pluck off like that, easy, it's ready. But I'll, I don't know. I'm going to eat it. Let's we'll see. And that's a Clemson Spineless. And my sister picked these peas. She picked these okra. Um, I think these are the 16 inch long pot. Louisiana 16 inch long pot. And because uh, it's like three big, huge ones in here. These are Clemson spineless, I think. I'm sorry about my hands. Working with them, those tomatoes really get your hands dirty. But that's it. That's my harvest for today. So this is pretty good. 
Looks pretty good. This okra is good. <laughs> it didn't look good, but it sure is good. I am going to make round ones. I'll probably use a T and take this and um, put them around in the um, in the pots. Cause this can you can bend this. It ain't like that black. Um, where it'll crease. I mean, you can't just fold it totally, but you can make a circle and get a connector. So I will come off of the little black flow line that's a one and a quarter, that's a one quarter inch with a T and make this as round as I want it and then um, connect to each side of the T and make a circle drip line in those pots out there. So, so that's all I'm gonna do. I hope that you all enjoyed hanging out with me today. I am so glad you all could join in and um, you know I am enjoying being out here. I went back to work today and um, from my little mini vacation and um, 10 minutes there and I was back like irritated. <laughs> but anyway, I came home and I just came out here and got started because this calms me. I love it. It relaxes me. It takes me away from here. It takes me away from my job. It takes me away from everything bad that goes on in the world. And um, even though Mr. No Shoulders and the ants and the turtles and all everybody else who like to bother me, bother my plants and everything, I still enjoy gardening more than anything else helps me mentally <laughs> so if you like the video give me a thumbs up please and then if you have not already hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload content so you all stay safe stay well and I will see you in the next video bye bye <laughs>